Sequels are the lifeblood that makes the entertainment industry go around. It's as true in video games as it is in movies, because publishers love nothing more than having another go on a tried and tested property. But not all sequels are created equal. Prepare to have your mind melted as I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are 9 video games you had no idea were sequels. Number 9. Red Faction is a sequel to Saints Row Though the first Red Faction was released a whole five years before the first Saints Row, both franchises were developed by Volition and published by THQ, and are ultimately tied into the same narrative continuity. To explain, Red Faction famously takes place on Mars in the late 21st century as miners revolt against the evil Ultor Corporation, and though Ultor is introduced as a mere clothing company in the first Saints Row, by 2008 Saints Row 2, they're a tyrannical megacorp that's basically the root of all evil. Given that Saints Row 2 is set in 2011 and Red Faction around 2070, that makes Red Faction a six decades later sequel which shows the outfit's exponential growth into a spacefaring corporate colossus. Both games even feature a character with the surname Griffin working for Ultor, who we can easily infer are related in some fashion. Yes, it's a leap between games in terms of genre, aesthetics and tone, but that doesn't mean it's not legitimate. Number 8. Control is a sequel to Alan Wake The most concrete confirmation that Control is a stealth sequel to Alan Wake can be found by reading a file in the Federal Bureau of Control entitled The Bright Falls Incident. Bright Falls is the small Washington town where the events of Alan Wake took place, and the report refers explicitly to the mysteries of that game as Altered World Events, AWE, confirming that Control is indeed an in-universe follow-up. Control's subsequent or DLC further suggested the allusions to Alan Wake weren't mere easter eggs, and Remedy then confirmed that both games were indeed part of a shared world they called the Remedy Connected Universe. All of this means it's looking increasingly likely that the upcoming Alan Wake 2 will further bridge the gap between the two franchises, regardless of when that takes place in relation to Control. Number 7. Vagrant Story is a sequel to Final Fantasy Tactics Final Fantasy Tactics was released in 1997 and was the first Square Enix RPG set in the Kingdom of Evilis, as would become the setting for other Tactics games and also Final Fantasy XII. What you might have missed though is that Evilis was also the setting for another non-Final Fantasy RPG produced by the company, 2000's cult classic Vagrant Story. Vagrant Story was directed by Yasumi Matsuno, who also helmed Tactics, and the game's prologue begins with a quote from an individual called A.J. Jirai. This is surely Araslam Jirai, the very same scholar who appears in Tactics. Though Vagrant Story is set in the world of Valendia rather than Evilis, during development of Final Fantasy XII, Matsuno decided to retcon Vagrant Story's true location by revealing Valendia to be one of Evilis's three continents. Number 6. Project Snowblind is a sequel to Deus Ex don't feel bad if you've never even heard of Crystal Dynamics 2005 FPS Project Snowblind, which despite receiving mostly positive reviews, just kinda came and went. Originally, however, Project Snowblind was intended to be the third entry into the Deus Ex franchise under the moniker Deus Ex Clan Wars, with Deus Ex developer Ion Storm supervising Crystal Dynamics' work on the game. During development though, some allege due to the poor commercial reception of Deus Ex sequel Invisible War, the game was rebranded as an original sci-fi action title that dropped the Deus Ex relation altogether. Mostly. While Project Snowblind lacked Deus Ex's stealth and RPG mechanics, it did still take place in a future dystopia centered around nanotech augmentations, all of this very much feeling like the Deus Ex wheelhouse. Though changes were made to give everyone involved plausible deniability about it existing in the same world, you don't need to squint very much to see Project Snowblind as a not-so-sly sequel to the original Deus Ex, taking place barely a decade into the future. Some fans even maintain to this day that despite its gameplay changes, Project Snowblind is more of a Deus Ex sequel than Invisible War ever was. Number 5. Gone Home is a sequel to Bioshock 2 Minerva's Den Indie gem Gone Home is such a small, seemingly self-contained experience, it doesn't seem like it could be much of a sequel to anything. In fact though, it has an awesome tie to Bioshock 2's DLC, released three years earlier, Minerva's Den. Crucially, Minerva's Den was co-developed by three people who would eventually form Fulbright, the team behind Gone Home. In Minerva's Den, there's a playable video game called Spitfire, an asteroid-style arcade shooter that's believed to be the first game ever made. In Gone Home, players can come across an SNES cartridge for Super Spitfire, an apparent follow-up. Better still, Super Spitfire is published by a company called CMP Interactive, and CMP are the initials of Minerva's Den's protagonist, Charles Milton Porter. With Minerva's Den being set in 1968 and Gone Home in 1995, there's certainly plenty of time for Porter to start a company and develop the sequel. 
sequel. Fulbright co-founder Steve Gaynor even said all this was intentional, but, and I quote, in a totally non-litigious way. Number 4. Demon's Souls is a sequel to Kingsfield You'd certainly be forgiven for assuming that From Software's Soul series began with 2009's Demon's Souls, but that's not strictly the case. Its DNA emerged much earlier. The series really began back in 1994 with the company's very first game, Kingsfield, a first-person RPG which wrapped up with Kingsfield 4 in 2001. Though the series wasn't nearly as acclaimed as later Souls titles, Kingsfield was very clearly the Soulsborne genre's spiritual forebear, touting a similar medieval aesthetic and signature tough-as-nails difficulty. More to the point, a number of enemies, items, and locations from the Kingsfield series are later name-dropped throughout the Souls games, such as the dragon Seath the Scaleless and the Moonlight Greatsword to name just two. Given From Software's ambiguous world-building throughout the Souls franchise, themes of rebirth and creatures like the Basilisks going between Dark Souls and Elden Ring, it's easy to view Kingsfield as where it all began. Number 3. Code Vein is a sequel to God Eater Code Vein is set in the wake of a post-apocalyptic event referred to as the Great Collapse, with humanity creating creatures called Revenants to fend off monsters that began emerging around the world. Near the end of the game though, we learn that these monsters are actually the Aragami, the enemies of mankind featured throughout the God Eater series. While Code Vein never outright confirms the time period in which it's set, meaning God Eater could be a sequel to Code Vein instead, it's clear the two games share the same world and are related far beyond what anyone expected when Code Vein was first released. An eventual Bandai Namco shared universe, they've already begun sowing the seeds. Number 2. Days Gone is a sequel to Siphon Filter Despite its commercial success, Days Gone won't be getting a sequel, reportedly due to Sony's disappointment over its critical reception and their lack of belief in Ben Studios' ability to produce a superior follow-up. And yet the big ironic twist is that Days Gone is itself a sequel to Siphon Filter, the very PlayStation IP that put Ben on the map. Though unfavorably compared to Metal Gear Solid on release in 1999, the stealth action title was nevertheless praised by critics, with the plot focused around special agent Gabe Logan attempting to stop the titular bioweapon from being released. Needless to say, the series developed a loyal fanbase, and players soon discovered that Days Gone contains a number of easter eggs suggesting it's a direct continuation of what came before. For one, Days Gone's Nero soldiers look like an evolution of Siphon Filter's CBDC operatives, and Gabe Logan is mentioned in a number of lab files as are other characters and events from that series. The Smoking Gun though, players who beat the game will unlock a taser weapon that allows them to set enemy freakers on fire, a weapon which quite famously appeared in Siphon Filter first. Better still, if you examine this taser in Days Gone, it's marked with the initials GL, Gabe Logan. Players are left to figure out the particulars for themselves, especially with Gabe's apparent and death at the end of 2007's Logan Shadow, but considering that Days Gone's Freaker virus was also revealed to be developed in a lab, you can argue that Bend were connecting their IP pretty neatly. And number 1. Shadow Hearts is a sequel to Kadelka. Much like Code Vein, RPG Shadow Hearts was marketed as the start of a brand new IP, though some players began to notice it was a sequel to developer Sacknoth's previous game Kudelka, an RPG released two years prior. While Shadow Hearts is by no means a direct sequel, it's clearly a follow-up in more than just a spiritual sense. For starters, several characters from Kudelka reappear in the game, including title character Kudelka Assant playing a major role, and her son Halle Brankett being one of the game's playable party members. Elsewhere, the Amiga document plays a major role across both Kudelka and the Shadow Hearts games, and you even return to the Nemeton Monastery in Wales, which was previously featured in Kudelka. And those are just 9 video games you had no idea were sequels. Let me know your favorites down in the comments below, and please subscribe to the What Culture Gaming Podcast. For now, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com, and I'll catch you soon.